every now and then I find myself jumping into a game and falling in love, thinking to myself, oh my god, more people should know about this. I jumped into this game the other day hoping it would be a good game to play in the background of one of my videos. Four hours later, I was still in it. I couldn't wait to finish the video so I could go back to playing. Before I get too carried away, let's introduce the game. This game is called Sword with Sauce. It's a closed level stealth game that you can play any way you want to. Before we jump into gameplay though, let's take a look at the settings menu. Yeah, not super impressive. You have shadow quality, screen quality, effects quality, anti-aliasing, and then you have resolution. Let's venture up to the highest here and... 1080p! Yeah, this game's a bit lacking in the settings menu. I'm glad they let you turn bloom and motion blur on and off, as motion blur is a setting that always needs to go, and some games have bloom just up to dang high. At the bottom here we have our audio settings, master volume, sound effects, and background. Now, for how small this game is, those audio settings are pretty much all this game needs. As for the general graphics settings, there should be at least an FOV slider. I know I'm annoying about that, but every game should have one and this game is no exception. Jumping into the controls, we have pretty much as you'd expect, and honestly, looking at the control settings can really tell you a lot about the video game you're playing. Sometimes it's misleading though. See, this game is a pretty advanced stealth game. You definitely wouldn't pick up on that in here though. Regardless, you have a mouse sensitivity slider, invert mouse, and toggle crouch. Not bad, and not much I see missing here. Getting ready to play the game, we have a customization menu that lets you pick your main weapon. You can choose from a bow, a rifle, a shield, a sword, a shotgun, and a sniper. The projectile weapons do not give you infinite ammo though, so you'll be picking up other weapons as you go. For me, I like the stealth weapons like the bow, sword, and shield. The shield works pretty much exactly like Captain America's shield does in the new Marvel movies, which I found really cool, especially because it requires a certain level of skill to use, kinda like every weapon in this game. If we go back to the gadgets, you can customize these to your heart's content, again depending on which game style you prefer to play. As you can see, I've chosen the stealthier options without going too overboard. The game has some really crazy ways in which you can kill people, ranging from a loud running gun style to a more realistic ninja style to a James Bond ultra crazy gadgets, and you can mix and match these depending on which style fits you. This game is in early access right now, so I imagine in the future some of these may be locked behind challenges, which would be a really good direction for this game to go. Challenge modes really do keep players involved, but there's also a novelty to making your own challenges as you play. Now let's get into the level select here. This game, as I said earlier, is in early access, and there's a decent amount of content already along with customization within that content. For example, there are four levels to play as of right now. That would be Mansion, Harbor, City, and Atrium. The levels themselves vary in difficulty, and you have a slider you can set to change the difficulty, which makes the AI more alert, gives them more health, and makes them more capable with their weapons. Now along with the difficulty setting, if you go here, you can change the game mode. Ninja mode means that if you're spotted, the game restarts and you try again. Survival mode is just a wave of enemies constantly spawning until you die, and then we have normal mode where you simply clear a map of enemies and you can do that any way you like, be it stealthy or run and gun. The game just has so much replayability. I jump in simply wanting to play one round and I end up gaming for hours. So let's jump into a game and see what it's like. I'm gonna jump into regular mode first. Now when it comes to this mode, you pretty much have free reign. If you go for a stealthy approach and you mess up, who cares, cause at that point, you become a weapon wielding beast. With the sword, you can block bullets by holding down the right mouse button as bullets fly at you. You can also parry enemies if you block correctly, and if you press the R key, you can throw your sword at the enemy and stick them to the walls, which if done right, feels awesome. I like using the sword as my main weapon, but in normal mode, I generally switch between different guns as I go. It just looks cool and makes you feel like Jason Bourne, Jack Bauer, and James Bond all at the same time. Running through enemies, no stopping, picking up any and every weapon as it's flying through the air because you just wasted 8 enemies in 3 seconds with no remorse. Thinking nothing, only imagining the last thought going through that new enemy right in front of you as you mercilessly cut him down. <laughs> this game just calls to my inner psychopath. But I don't love it because the game is violent. I love it because it's difficult. Even in normal mode, you'll find yourself in tricky situations that can end your run, which really only makes me want revenge. But I guess to get better at the game as well. When it comes to the shield, pressing R will make you throw it, but this thing bounces off enemies like crazy. If you really learn how to use it, this shield can be one of the greatest weapons. Taking out three enemies all at once without anyone noticing and having it come right back to you literally makes you feel like Captain America. The regular punch with the shield is cool too. It launches enemies a pretty decent distance away and leaves no blood behind which is a really decent advantage as if you're trying to be stealthy, blood is something that will get you caught. Another cool thing about the shield is if you block with it, swordsmen will stumble as though they've been parried and gunmen will have their bullets deflected right back at them. 
The third stealth weapon is the bow. It's really basic, and if you use it, I suggest equipping the quiver. This weapon can be really cool when you get used to it, but the problem is, an enemy's arm will deflect a kill shot and get you spotted. One really cool mechanic along with that though, you can pick up arrows after they've been fired. If you shoot an enemy twice, however, like say shooting him in the arm and then the head, the game will only give you one arrow back. Headshots are tricky too, but if you can pull it off and use the bow in an expertly stealthy way, you feel kind of like Green Arrow. I know I keep equating the builds to certain superheroes, but the game is just built on a ton of different combinations, like the grappling hook. I use this thing all the time to get to the taller areas of the map, but not only that, I use it to get behind walls quicker, so the enemy doesn't spot me. Actually, there are a ton of different gadgets I have yet to go over. While in the game, pressing Q will bring up the gadget's menu, and from there you select a weapon. The more skill it takes to use the weapon, the less blood it will leave behind, and the easier it is to kill the enemy, the more blood splatter you get. Luckily, if you equip the clean gadget, you can sweep up the blood so no enemies stumble upon it. Then you have shurikens that you can use to expertly throw and get a headshot or just use two at a time to kill one enemy. The spinning death, which tracks enemies and kills the first one it sees. Honestly, there's so much here and you get to decide which ones you want and make builds out of them. So if you want to use black holes, poison gas, poison darts, and sticky lightning traps, you can go for a James Bond build. If you want to go for shurikens, a silent pistol, and a blade, you can be all splinter cell. And if you want to use guns, just grab extra magazines. There was one weapon that I didn't cover though. If you jump into the game and you throw your weapon away, you can use your fists to knock enemies out. On normal mode, this takes 3 punches to do so, and this can be really tricky if you're trying the ninja mode weaponless. Now, are there any cons to this game? Any gaping flaws? To be honest, I've played this game quite a lot in the past few weeks, and I can only find one thing that I want changed. If you notice, the middle of the screen acts like a magnet for your cursor. I get stuck in the middle of the screen while aiming. Not sure why this happens, but this sucks when I'm trying to line up a shot. Other than that, there's nothing else that I really want changed. Things I want added, sure. For example, the levels are based around stealth and you have to kill all the guards, but what are they guarding? I think it would be cool if you had to collect something and you could do it ghost style where you never kill anyone, or you could do it running gun style. I'd imagine this item could be placed procedurally, or at least in certain spots along the map, so it's always a challenge to locate. I've even thought of a multiplayer idea for this game, where you go against one other person. You have a map full of NPCs, and you both look like NPCs as well. One of you has to kill as many guards as possible without being detected, while the other one tries to find you and stop you. I think there would actually be a ton of multiplayer potential here. I'm sure there's a laundry list of things that the developers want to add. These people are very competent developers and I cannot believe they're selling this game for as cheap as it is while it's in early access. To be honest, there's already enough content here that I'd pay at least 10 bucks. Even more as the game is finished, but I think the $4 price tag is a smart move as well. People will be more enticed to pick it up when it's cheap and tell their friends about that little indie gem they ran into. Another thing I'd like to see added though is a stealth gadget for guns. Not the shotgun of course, but the sniper and machine gun would be really fun weapons to use if you could pick up a silencer gadget. The game seems to give you a lot of powerful gadgets already, I think it would be a lot of fun. And perhaps after winning missions or challenges, you could be rewarded with some cool skins for your swords and guns and especially the shield. I mean, look, I know where the copyright belongs, but for the love of god, it's Captain America's shield. Perhaps I'm getting too carried away, but I just see so much potential for this game. It's so great as it is. I've always been a stealth game kind of guy, but the new AAA stealth games are so drenched with story or a do things the way I want you to attitude. It's just so refreshing to be able to jump into a game, pick any weapon I want to, and play any way I decide to. No restrictions. This game was again Sword with Sauce. You can pick it up on Steam currently for $3.99 or your regional equivalent. I don't know if the price will raise when the game comes out of early access, but I definitely expect it to. I'll see you next time. Well, right, but... Good. There's so many... Oh no, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this! Yeah! Yes! Yeah! <laughs> oh, I am so... I am so done, that was all I needed. Oh my god. Dang it! It just... Wasn't that insane? Like, this thing is insane! If you use it correctly... <laughs>